polynomials and synthetic division. National five essential skills for this topic are factorising. Polynomials. Polynomials are expressions with one or more terms added together, where each term has a number, which is called a coefficient, followed by a variable such as x raised to a power. For example, 3x to the power of 5 plus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 6 is an example of a polynomial, as is 2x to the power of 18 plus 10. The degree of the polynomial is the value of the highest power. For our first example, this has degree 5 and our second example has degree 18. It is worth noting that quadratics are polynomials of degree 2 and if you have any constants within your polynomial, for example 6, that is equal to 6 x to the power of 0. So constants are polynomials of degree 0. Synthetic division. We use a process called synthetic division to factorise a polynomial. Here is an example where we have 47 divided by 7. This is to help us with some terminology. Number 7 is our divisor. 5 is our remainder and 6 is our quotient, so it's the answer we get. Key steps when we are doing synthetic division. We write coefficients on the top row of our table with the divisor on the outside of our table. We bring down the first coefficient. We multiply and add across the table. The number in the bottom right is our remainder. We may have to factorise the quotient if we're asked to in the question, and we also may need to solve. This will become much clearer when I go through an example. Here we have x squared plus x minus 6, and we have to divide this by x minus 2. We first of all write the coefficients of our polynomial in a table. So the coefficient of x squared is 1. The coefficient of x is 1, and then the coefficient of x to the 0 is negative 6. Please remember to place your signs with your coefficients in your table. Our divisor, well x minus 2 would give a divisor of x equal to 2, and we place this outside our table. Next step is we bring our first coefficient down and write it on the bottom line. We then multiply and add across the columns. So 2 multiplied by 1 will give us an answer of 2. We then add vertically. 1 plus 2 will give me 3. 2, the divisor, multiplied by 3 will give me an answer of 6. And finally, negative 6, add 6, will give me 0. The number in the bottom right in this box is a remainder, so a remainder is 0. What's left, the 1 and the 3, are coefficients, and this gives us a quotient of x plus 3. We can then see that if we have x squared plus x minus 6 and we divide by x minus 2, our answer is x plus 3 and we have no remainder. Or, it would be the same as factorising. x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2. If we're asked to solve the quadratic, then you need to find your x values. Equate both brackets equal to 0 and then rearrange. So x is equal to minus 3 or x is equal to 2. Example 1. Show that x minus 4 is a factor of 2x to the power of 4 minus 9x cubed plus 5x squared minus 3x minus 4. 
So first of all, we're going to write down our coefficients of our polynomial. 2, minus 9, 5, negative 3 and negative 4. And we then need to find out what we're dividing by. So we'll equate x minus 4 to 0. And we'll rearrange to get x equals 4. So 4 is what we're putting through our synthetic division. We'll firstly bring the number 2 down to the front. And we'll do 4 multiplied by 2 to give us 8. We then add vertically. Negative 9 add 8 is negative 1. We then do 4 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 4. 5 add negative 4 is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Negative 3 add 4 is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. And if we do negative 4 add 4, we get an answer of 0. As the remainder equals 0, this means that x minus 4 is a factor. Example 2. Given fx is equal to x cubed minus 37x plus 84, we have to show that x equals minus 7 is a root and then factorise for them. We first write the coefficients in our table. You will notice that 0 has been placed between 1 and negative 37. This is because we do not have an x squared term, therefore if we do not have it, the coefficient must be 0. You must place the 0 in, in order to answer the, answer the question correctly. Our divisor is negative 7, which we write outside the table, and we bring the number 1 down. Negative 7 multiplied by 1 is negative 7. 0 plus negative 7 is negative 7. Negative 7 multiplied by negative 7 is 49. Negative 37 add 49 will be 12. And negative 7 multiplied by 12 is negative 84. Again, we have a remainder of 0. As the remainder is equal to 0, x equals minus 7 is a root of fx. It's important in the exam that you write this sentence to explain your findings. We then have to factorise fully, so we therefore look at our quotient, which is x squared minus 7x plus 12. Therefore, fx can be written as our quotient multiplied by our divisor which is x squared minus 7x plus 12 multiplied by x plus 7. If our root is x equals minus 7, then the factor must be x plus 7. We then need to factorise our quadratic, which will be factorised to x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 4. And fully factorised fx, we must write all three brackets together x minus 3, x minus 4, x plus 7. Try these examples on your own. Please pause the video. The answers for A, the remainder is 0 and factorised fully we have x plus 1 x plus 1 and x minus 2. For b, again the remainder is 0 and factorised fully would be x plus 5 multiplied by 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. The quadratic does not factorise any further and we can prove this by using our discriminant and finding that it is less than 0. The remainder and factor theorem. For any polynomial, if fx is divided by x minus h and we have a remainder fh, if we put h 
into the function and get 0, we can assume that x minus h is a factor. In other words, we can use synthetic division to help us write a function in the form your factor x minus h multiplied by the quotient plus a remainder f h. Example 3. Find the solutions of 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 16x plus 12 is equal to 0. In order to find solutions to a polynomial, we must factorise first before we can solve it. To factorise a polynomial, we must use synthetic division. However, we do not know any factors. Therefore, we need to guess roots by looking at numbers which are factors of the last coefficient, 12. Factors of 12 would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, 4, 6 or 12. Using our remainder and factor theorem, if we put the number 1 through fx, we, get, we do not get an answer of 0, therefore x minus 1 cannot be a factor. If we put x equal to negative 1 through it, again, this does not equate to 0, therefore x plus 1 will not be a factor. So we're going to try x equal to 2. The factor relating to this would be x minus 2 in the bracket. Setting up our synthetic division with our coefficients in our top line and our number 2 outside, we bring the first coefficient down. 2 multiplied by 2 is 4. Negative 15 add 4 is negative 11. 2 multiplied by negative 11 is negative 22. 16 add negative 22 is negative 6. And 2 multiplied by negative 6 is negative 12 and we have a remainder of 0. As the remainder is 0, x equals 2 is a root of fx. We then need to look at our quotient to enable to factorise it before solving. Our quotient is 2x squared minus 11x minus 6. So fx is equal to our quotient multiplied by x minus 2. Factorising our quadratic, we get an answer of 2x plus 1, x minus 6 and x minus 2. We were asked for the solutions of the polynomial, therefore we need to equate each bracket to 0 and solve for x. This will give an answer of x equals negative a half x equals 6 or x equals 2. Try this example on your own. Please pause the video. The answer fully factorised is x plus 1, x plus 3, x minus 2. Solving to give x equals negative 3, negative 1 and 2. If you want some extra practice, please try page 137, exercise 7e. What have we learned today? Today we've looked at both polynomials and synthetic division. To use synthetic division, we follow the steps. We write our coefficients on the top row of our table with our divisor outside. We bring down the first coefficient and then multiply and add across the table. The number in the bottom right is our remainder. If we're asked, we may need to factorise our quotient to factorise a polynomial fully, and we also may be asked to solve the polynomial.